projects that have come out that I am hearing different um, because I needed this series for myself as well so that's really awesome um, but so tune in um, we had an awesome conversation and I hope you're inspired by it and yeah God, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for um, being able to allow us to come together despite anything that may be going on on the outside. We thank you for being able to come together in our purpose, God, and just, you know, give you glory in all things. Um, we thank you for what you're doing through um, the life of Danielle, the life of myself, um, through art in general. And um, we just pray that you receive all the glory and honor through this and um, just be with us in this conversation, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, cool. So um, you want to just start off by like introducing yourself a little bit, like telling us who you are. Um, definitely pronounce your last name so I don't butcher it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm Danielle Apicella is how you pronounce it. Um, okay. Yes, Apicella. Um, I'm 19 and um, <laughs> from New York. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a very awkward person. But, um, <laughs> no, it's fine. There's that too. Um, so I was reading something and you talked about um, you started writing music at a really young age and everything. Like what actually got you started with, you know, writing music, um, singing, different things like that? So I honestly, the only way to explain it is that god gave me the gift because i was like five and writing lyrics like i loved lyrics always they weren't like good but <laughs> <laughs> um actually i look back and some of the songs aren't bad but um i i've always loved writing lyrics and like singing from a really young age like i have a bunch of videos of me like five six singing songs i wrote um to my mom so it's just always something i really like to do Mm -hmm. um, I never really wanted to do it as a career necessarily um, because I don't know I have a lot of different interests and I'm not like like I said I'm an awkward person I don't really like being in front of a bunch of people and like yeah um, <laughs> wasn't really planning on it but I always had this feeling inside that that's the direction God was going to lead me in mm -hmm. um, and yeah that happened um, I started getting homeschooled during high school, and that's really when um, I, like, I learned the guitar. I started writing a lot more, and um, I really felt like God was telling me this is the direction I want you to go in. Um, yeah. That's really awesome. That's really awesome. Has there ever been any kind of an impact that writing music has had for you in your growth, um, especially with God, or um, just as an artist in general? For sure. I mean, music for me, it's like, it's how I process things. And a lot of the times, like a lot of my songs that I'm never going to release, they're um, prayers that I have. And like, I would have never been able to put it into words if it wasn't like in a song. Right. And so if I look back at any of the big moments in my life, there was a song that went along with it and yeah. like helped me connect more to God and like I don't know it's just it's how I process things and how I like especially in my walk with God that's like my biggest inspiration and like mm -hmm. I mostly write my songs at church actually <laughs> or I start my concepts like for songs at church like all of my um uh, I don't know where they are but all my my church bulletins have like lyrics all over them wow so that's really where I just like I get inspiration a lot from my private time with the Lord, like in scripture and like, um, actually my next song that's coming out, um, wilderness next week. It's like, um, based off of the Israelites when they were stuck in the wilderness, but like, 
um, basically just being stuck in that cycle of sin and like that mm-hmm. it keeps you from what God has for you. Yeah. And so it's like how I process things. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how you just explained your song wilderness, because that's kind of how I learned the Bible. Like I've never, I never honestly knew how to like sit down and study the Bible, like how some people can just read it and then they're like highlighting all this stuff. And I just be looking at them like, <laughs> what? (laughs) Like, what did you get out of that? Like, I don't understand. Like music is what helped me study the Bible. So for somebody that that doesn't necessarily know the word of God, if they would have listened to um, your song wilderness, like I'm definitely sure that would help them, you know, like at least start somewhere, you know what I mean? Which is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. That's what art is for. Like that's, that's what music Mm -hmm. is for. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why I'm doing this whole thing because it's like, you never realize um, how, art can have such of an impact on your life, whether it's positively, negatively, um, with a with your walk with, with God, with your growth as a person, with your growth as an artist, you know, different things like that. Um, so that's, that's really awesome. Um, can you describe like a time where you were inspired the most, um, whether it be like through your art or whether it be just like with God using you through your art? Um, like what kind of a situation really inspired you the most to keep going is what I should say to keep going um, I hard like this is a ministry you know what I mean it is and like so for me one of my biggest struggles is stage fright like I am so stage fright I actually have yet to perform ever so really? yeah so if you can pray for me but um <laughs> Um, yeah, I just, I struggle a lot with that. And so that's one of the reasons I never wanted to go into the music business is because I knew that's something I would have to do. And so I did a lot of, like, I let fear get in the way a lot of moving forward. Um, and in high school, when I was high school, I wrote like probably more songs than ever because I was just, that's when I really started. And so I was just writing like every single day. And I wrote this one song, um, I think it was called Lifeguard. Um, and it was just about God and how he like always like pulls me back in if I'm like running away and like, it was, I don't even know, something like that. And I remember my cousin, um, one of my cousins, he's, um, he's an atheist and he came over and somehow like I ended up playing it for him and, um, he went home and he told his mom, like, she really believes in this God. And like, like he said something like, I want, even though I'm not Christian, I want to raise my kids Christian. Cause I want them to be like that. That's mm-hmm. basically what he said. And that was the first time I really saw God like use one of my songs. Yeah. And I was like, that is so cool <laughs> that yeah. God could use the song I wrote like in my bedroom right. to minister to my cousin who I've never spoken to about the Lord before. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was one experience that I've always remembered and just kind of like there's little things like that that would always happen that God was just like I want to use this and I'm going to use this <laughs> um so things like that and I think also when I released um my song Can't Save a Soul mm-hmm. um that was really out of my comfort zone it was my first song ever that I released that I wrote and like a lot of people were listening to it and um I remember one one person commented on my YouTube video about how like her brother, um, like she really wanted to save her brother because he was like struggling with drugs or something like that. And like, Mm -hmm. I relate to that. My brother used to struggle um, with drugs and like, I was able to have this whole conversation with her, um, like about like why I wrote my song, Can't Mm -hmm. Save a Soul. And like, um, we're, we're still in contact like to this day. And it was like, it was one of those experiences again where God just like went before me and like had me like use me and my songs to like minister to someone. And it's like, I never want to get to a place where I just look at the people who listen to my songs as like numbers. Like those are souls and people. And like, they're the reason I'm like making the music. I, I mean, so yeah, things like that where God will just remind me like what he's doing and the reason he has me here. That's so inspiring. Moments like that are really important because it pushes you, you know, to keep going. Because sometimes, like, even doing this, like, 
this is just something that I'm doing on a small scale right now because mm -hmm. my bigger picture is to open my nonprofit, which is a building, which is an art center for people to have a place to create their art. But it's like, even just doing this YouTube vlog, like it can get so discouraging sometimes. Like you need those moments of, of um, affirmation, of reassurance and things like that, where God just like, you know, tells you like, hey, this is happening, keep going. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it just pushes you. Those are so important. So like, those are really important moments. And I wanted to ask that because like, being as though you're 19, number one, and an artist, like, there's a lot of people out here that are young, that are trying to do the right thing, that are trying to, you know, make art be impactful. But, you know, oftentimes, especially in my community, I see that they, you know, dabble against, you know, making impactful and purposeful art versus making, you know, something that's just going to appeal to the masses. And, um, you know, oftentimes they, they get discouraged in the process because they're not seeing stuff right away or, um, you know, they don't feel as though they're being effective in different things like that. So that's why I asked that question, because I need people to know that, you know, they can relate, you know, that there's somebody out there that they can relate to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The title of this um, whole vlog is called Art Talk, and it means a relative talk, because um, that's one thing that I kind of lacked in my whole upbringing was having somebody to relate to. So mm -hmm. that's really why I asked that question, because, you know, whoever's watching this. It just happened on my Instagram the other day. I was talking about Byron's project and um, somebody that I, I don't even, I never even met him. I just followed him on Instagram. He followed me back. He watched my story. And normally I don't really speak out on social media. Like I kind of just pull stuff and go, <laughs> but like <laughs> I wanted to speak about Byron's project because of the way that it affected me. And because I posted that video, like he ended up listening to the project and like completely loved it, like never heard of Byron before, which was crazy in my opinion. And that was kind of like one of those moments that you had with your cousin. For me, I was like, wow, like I was just saying how I felt about the project and he ended up like really needing to hear it. So mm. that was cool. And it was crazy because he cool. said, if it wasn't for your testimony, I didn't even feel like that was my testimony. <laughs> I was just talking. I was like, okay, cool. Like, look at God, you know, that's awesome. So um, do you think you can put into words uh, why purposeful art matters to you? So I just, Okay, for me, there's so much that, like, art is a reflection of the culture most of the time. And it's, um, that's why when we listen to music nowadays on the radio and stuff like that, it's so dark and it has, like, we don't even understand all the things we're filling our heads with listening to all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, like, I feel like purposeful art especially when you know like for me at least like I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for a purpose like right. I don't see the point in just like making art to make art and like someone like if I had the song can't save a soul and then another song that was about like let's say like partying or whatever living it up and like one person was going to hear just one of those songs, not both of them. Right. Like, I would have seriously missed out on a chance to, like, impact someone's life if they heard that song instead of the other one. Right. And, like, you don't know, like, who's listening to your songs, who, what they're walking through at that exact moment that they hear your song. Like, you don't know the way God works and, like, what he does. And that's why I feel like I want all of my songs to have, like, a purpose and a point and a message and, like, I don't know. I feel like those are the songs that you remember too. Like if you look back, like I know so many of like Lecrae's really old songs. Um yes. that used to minister to me so much. Like I I remember those moments when I was feeling exactly what he was saying. And like I remember how the song like like it really changed things because I was like, wow, someone else is going through this. I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. Like someone else understands and like put into words what I couldn't put into words um 
And that's what makes a song special, you know, and what makes art special. Um, yeah. It's being intentional in the process, mm -hmm. you know, like that, that matters the most. Unfortunately, I see a lot of people that aren't intentional in the process and I pray as much as I can for them. Um, and I'm really hoping that, you know, this can reach as many people as God needs it to reach because, um, I don't want it to see, I don't want to see it become an epidemic. You know what I mean? Because art literally changed the whole art, but music changed the whole trajectory of my life. Like the whole trajectory of my life. Like, and honestly, because of Lecrae, like I started <laughs> Lecrae in 07. You know what I mean? He was, listen, he was so hardcore back then. He was, he was hardcore. the ultimate rap pastor. <laughs> like he used to give it to you straight up know anything mm. like he would be like this is it and mm. then that's too funny the craig was really like he was so like <laughs> hardcore back then no yeah. but that's exactly you know you have to be intentional in the process and yeah like that's for some people i don't want to come across like um it's wrong to make a song about like anything else like right about like, I just wrote a song about heartbreak, you know, like, I, I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm just saying like, at the end of the day, like, what do you want to leave behind? Mm -hmm. You know, like, that's, that's really it, you know, mm -hmm. like, if I died tomorrow, which we're not promised tomorrow, mm -hmm. would I have been happy that I released the songs I released, like, to leave behind? But mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. It reminds me of, um, I think the song is called If I Die Tonight. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. That reminds me of that song. Um, that that song helped me a lot too because for that very reason, I was like, well, what am I doing to, like what I'm doing right now literally has no, like back in the day, I would say like what I'm doing right now has no substance. So it was like, when I heard that song, if I die tonight, I'd be like, dang, like, right. If I do die tonight, like what? <laughs> Like, I didn't do anything but go to a party. Like, mm. people gonna know me as the girl that used to go to parties. Yay. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, yeah. That's real, though. Yeah. Really real. I we, as Christians, still need stuff that we can turn up to. You know what I mean? Like, we still need things that we can just pop to. Not everything has to be super deep, but mm -hmm. it's still intentional. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So that's that. Oh, that's what's up. All right, I'm gonna let you go now. All right. 30. So, um, yeah. You want to pray out? Yes. You can pray out. Okay. <laughs> okay, wait. How do you pronounce your name? Oh, it's okay. So, my real name is Danasia. It's That's pretty. Oh, thank you. My parents literally made it up. So cool. <laughs> but <laughs> honestly, like my mom wanted to name me Asia. My sister's middle name is Danae. So, they, they put it together. <laughs> yeah. But, um, the name that I go by is Nage. Nage. Okay. And then um, the company is Creative Royalty. That's probably what's popping up on the Zoom thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah, creative Royalty. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, God, thank you for Nage and for um, the conversation that we had, Lord. And I just, I thank you for her heart. And I just pray for her ministry, Lord. I pray that it grows and that um, you continue to just mold her character and um, give her um, just more inspiration and hope for the things that you have for her, Lord. Um, I just, I pray that this interview reaches whoever it needs to. Um, and I just pray that the work that you have, Lord, would just continue to go forth and um, just reach all the hearts that you, you intend to reach, Lord. Um, and so I just thank you for today and yeah. Yay. Thank you Royals for tuning in today. Um, I really hope you enjoyed that conversation with Danielle. Um, listen, if you're out here and you're an artist and you're young or you're just getting started, whatever the case may be, um, don't give up. Do all things unto God. Give everything back to him and just keep going. Um, those moments that Danielle talked about where God would just, you know, speak to her and give her different um, testimonies of different people that were touched by her music, um, that kind of, you know, kept her going, that kept pushing her. Those moments will come, you know. 
they have come for me while I've been making this YouTube channel. Um, this is not something that I wanted to do. It was something that I felt led to do by God. So it's only by His grace that I'm continuing to do it. So if you're young and you're an artist and you're trying to make cripples for art, keep pushing. If you're just starting out in your artistry, keep pushing. Um, I'll be praying for you. I know Danielle will be praying for you. Um, I know all my other friends will be praying for you. So, yeah. I really hope you like this conversation um, with Danielle. Um, again, more to come in Why Purposeful Art Matters. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Make sure you follow Danielle on all her socials. I'm going to post everything down below in the description. So make sure you check it out. Follow her. Stream her music. Buy her music. Um, she is also signed to RMG, so make sure you purchase when you can purchase um, because that helps her and other artists push out new projects and new material and different things like that. So, with that being said, I will see you in the next art talk.